Okay, time for another studio video. We'll take a look at this little T-Rex design that I've been working on and I'll give you some hints at what this has developed into, which is another one of our iPad sculpting courses. So let's dive right in and take a look at what's been happening this week. So there might be a little bit of noise in this one because um, we've got a couple of the printers going. So I just wanted to share with you uh, the kind of print setup I've got. So most of my years have been spent with um, FDM, which is fused deposit modeling. So that's the filament kind of modeling that you see. And in recent years, um, certainly about five or six years ago, I turned to resin and I bought a Form 2. Um, and then I had some issues with that after a, a good few years and I switched now to um, this one, which is called the Piopoli Fenom. So this is a huge beast of a machine. And you can see there it has a resin vat and the model sticks to that plate there. And I also use this, which is just a little tiny dream machine. This is called an Elegoo Mars Pro. Um, and it turns out incredible work. I also use, let me show you over here. I'm in a bit of a sort out today. I also use this thing, which was a kit built. And you might think, well, if you've got a Piopoli Phenom, why would you possibly want an FDM machine like this? But this is great for large volumes. So I just put anything where, where I want, like a big thing to sculpt on. I'll just set this print in. This particular print, which is the T-Rex head, is about uh, a three day print so it's crazy times uh, and that's on the lowest print setting um but i still i still stand by it i still think it's it, you know it still has some really good um you know some good resolutions for the kind of stuff i did but let's take a quick look at uh, dennis has just stolen my chair so that's a little bit awkward uh would you buddy let me sit down there you go good boy so this is what I want to talk to you about today. So this is from the um, Piopoli Phenom. So this is just what we, this is a very, very quick test print. Um, I'm trying to stop the light from wobbling for you. I've got too many lights that aren't uh, fit for purpose in this studio. So this is the first print that I've got. I haven't fully cleaned it down yet, so I'm being, I haven't got my gloves on. I've taken my gloves off, but um, but you can see it's come out quite well. Bear in mind, this is sculpted fully on the iPad. Um, I prepared it in ZBrush for the print, which is only a decimation. And then this is what's come out of it. So those teeth have all printed perfectly on the top. Um, I'm not so sure yet on the bottom because that's where I put the, the light supports. Um, so very soon I'll know, but again, it's only a very quick test, so I'm not overly bothered as to whether it, you know, it, it's to, it's to help me understand how to do those teeth really. Um, you can see it's picked up. Um, need to be careful, like I say, because it's still it's literally just out of the cleaning fluid. Um, so if you look, it's picked up all of that skin detail, all the scales, and this is only small compared to what the final is going to be. But, um, you know, it's come out ex extremely well. Um, the little tiny claws on the hands are all working. So um, there is a drain hole there. So I always hollow my prints out. Um, and that means that the, the, the uh, cleaning fluid, the isopropanol, will, will actually um, just drain out of it when I, when I put it on the right orientation. But as you can see there, I'm quite happy with today's print. Um, I'm going to make this available as a... A tiny little course, not so much about how to prep it for print, but how to how I use it in um, the iPad. So look out for a, a little, a tiny little course, and I'm going to give the model away with the course as well. So the money for the course will really be about the model. So take a look at that in the next week or so, and that'll be available the same as our iPad sculpting course. So we'll make it available via here. So yeah, I just wanted to show you the first test prints of this, but you're going to see a lot of this if you follow my channel because um, I'm going to do a lot of creatures over the next few months as well as everything else that's going on. So yeah, I hope you like the, the first test results and um, you know what we were getting out of um, I, uh, Nomad Sculpt. So uh, hopefully if you follow along with any of my social media channels, you'll have been watching me uh, work on this guy in the last few days. So this is a Tyrannosaurus Rex. 
Um, and I've done, it's not accurate in terms of any one specific um, uh, theropod. It's basically a mix of a few creatures that I liked um, with a heavy influence on the, on the Chinese one. Um, although that one of the latest Chinese ones that have, have been discovered, so it's um, it, it's a mix of of modern paleo art designs for a T Rex and my own take on them. But I wasn't going for any accuracy. It was simply a warm up um, a warm up sculpt. Really, I, w I was doing it because I'm about to start working on a a Spinosaurus, and I hadn't done a dinosaur for quite some time. So I just figured a warm-up T-Rex would be a great idea. And as I sculpted it, I just really enjoyed it to the point where I'm about to, to release it as, as a model for everyone. Um, so we're going to do it with a with a little bit of a video and a little bit, not a course, but like a mini course. So we're going to make that available in the next day or two. Um, because the model is, um, it's obviously 100% Nomad. Um and it's got all of the sliders in it to change it into different T-Rex. So I've got the V-Rex from Kong. I've got the some of the coloration of the original Jurassic Park um, T-Rex. I've got somebody requested um, uh, Dino Riders. So I just did a, a nice flat green Dino Riders color in there. Um, I've put some really bonkers ones of my own in, like red and white. Um, so like white body with, with, with red underside, um, which looks nice. So, th so this is a test print that I, that I would do, and this is on the Piopoli Phenom, but only small. Now, obviously, the Phenom could do 400 millimetres, so th th this is a tiny print for the Phenom, but I've had some issues with the Phenom. I've been putting different kinds of resin in it, and they've been failing quite drastically. So um, I wanted to go back to the original Piopoli Phenom resin, uh, which this is, and it printed absolutely perfectly. So... Um, I've tried a couple of slices on it. I normally, normally use Chitterbox, but uh, a friend of mine is the CEO of of uh, Lychee Slicer, so we're we're spending some time with with Lychee Slicer now. And we've got different different results, so I, I I love it, but I, I haven't done a video on it yet. Um, uh, I know Uncle Jesse has. If you want to see a video of that, um, I'll put a link either in the description or above up here. Um, but that's um, that's what. The kind of, of of resolution I get off the phenom. Phenom. Uh, if you can see here, this is what I'm going for. I don't know whether it's going to show it very well. Let's bring it right close up and see if it shows it for you. So there you go. What I was after is these, just to see if these print okay. Now I haven't taken it off the supports because I wanted to show you. Um, these are going to fail a little bit because it's it's quite a small print. So I think I'm going to have a problem here. So it might be on the final, I might take this jaw off and print that as a separate part. Um, but I'm not sure yet. I might make it articulated. So what I thought I'd do is um, I'll just st strip these supports off now while, while you're here. And I'll just show you how easy it is to crack these off. So um, these are what are, call, um, what are called, see these here. These ones are heavy supports. So they do leave a little mark on the surface, but certain models, certain things, like for example a dinosaur, doesn't really matter because it's going to be bumpy on the top anyway. So if I really wanted that surface to be clean, then I would have used really light supports with one or two large ones. But as you'll see in a moment, they, they come off fairly easily anyway. So... Now this model is um, completely hollow. You can see I've hollowed it out and put a drain hole in it there. So there's no real issues with, um, uh, you know, it's, it's super light and, and it drained out quite well. I've, I've drained it and washed it. Um, so I don't want to break any of these teeth straight away. Or I don't want, certainly don't want to break it on camera because that'd be quite embarrassing. And I probably will because, like I say, it is only a, a test print. I did do two test prints. I did another one just for um, to test whether it would stand, um, and that failed. That was on a different machine. That was on the Elegoo Mars. Um, but I kind of thought it would fail anyway. I, I didn't do it. I did a really quick job on it, um, so I deserved it to fail. Um, so I just I just binned that. I couldn't even use the parts that it, the little bit that it did print. So. Um, 
that was a bit of a shame really because i wanted to show you that this week um but um i'm going to do i said that i wasn't going to make it print ready but it, it will be futuristically i will be making a, a print version of this with all of the um the the armature uh, connectors and uh, not armature connectors sorry the um the 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 ways that we had keys to key so for example this bit keying onto the body um and it wouldn't be done like this this is for a wall mount so this is going to go on to something like uh what have i got something like this so it's going to be a not so much that but it would it, you know it will be a a, a mount on the wall uh, i don't have any plates just looking if that's done any damage i'll just grab some tweezers um sometimes just nice just to pick these out and they come out i think i've actually left this this too long i should have done it while it was a bit drier than this i think there's some there's going to be some cracking because i left this too long maybe um let's just see if we've lost anything um now the lot the, the final print that i'm going to do is going to be a lot bigger than this so I'm going to support it in a different way, so it shouldn't be a major problem. Uh, in fact, it doesn't look too bad. I'll go in and do it um, with some glasses on later on, once I'm off the video here, because I want to be able to go in and really get all of the tiny little bits out. <laughs> Just blow on it there. So it's not done too bad of a job. It's not um, it's not brilliant. Um, but again, I didn't spend any time. I did auto supports. And then I just went in and did a few extra light supports for these teeth here. See these ones, as, as I said. Um, and generally speaking, uh, it's it's a success. So as you can see, it's... Um, I thought that's a bit weird. The, 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 the finish on the top is a bit weird. It's gone very shiny there, so I think I'll I'll take a look at that and see whether it needs a bit more of a wash with some isopropanol. Um, but it seems to have definitely got some kind of a uh, a glossy finish on there, which I can I can get rid of. But yeah, that's the that's the that's the test print done fine. Now what I'm looking for, and what I was looking for, is how much detail this carries. So what I'm quite impressed with is this kind of area here so i can bring the light a bit closer so yeah it, it, it most of the modeling has been done well all of the modeling has been done in in nomad sculpt on the ipad um which is the point but there comes a time when you when you have to leave nomad um and that's when you want it to be retopologized and you want good underlying geometry and a uv map so you know, I'm going to talk about that a little bit in the course about when I decide. You, you, you can. I did pose this one um, a couple of times as I was as I was working on it. Um, you can do it w with the geometry you've got in in Nomad, but it isn't ideal. It, it's not what I would call. You know, it it's, it means you have to work a lot harder. It's better actually if you just take it out and do a um, an auto retop in or a Z remesh as they call it in ZBrush. And then carry on once you've done your block out, put it back into Nomad. But not everybody's got that ability. Now, you can do that in Blender as well, or, or there's a free one as well that you can get instant meshes um, that'll do you a decent retop as well for free. So so there's plenty of ways to do it without having to resort to, to ZBrush. But, you know, I've been, you know, obviously I use ZBrush professionally, so that would be why I would use that. And then, and then basically it's just onto the, you know, once you've, once you've got that retop, it's then you start your sculpt properly. If that's, you know, if that's the process you go with, if you're not too bothered about posing it and you just want to slide the legs back and forward, maybe then there's no reason why you can't just do, you know, carry on completely a hundred percent in Nomad. And, um, but I think most people would have a desire to kind of get that, to, to get the model out of Nomad and, and get it moving down a pipeline of, of, of some kind. But yeah, it's it's you know it's quite um, as you'll see from from the images that I've been posting, it, it's come out really really well. From you know it was a nice model. Uh, it started off literally as a warm up, but but evolved into much more over a, a day or so. Um, and it's the start of a lot of dinosaurs that I'm going to do. So if you if you like creatures and 
characters and then you know and, and you enjoy the kind of you know m mobile sculpting that i do a lot of this year or have done a lot of this year then you know this is this is where i'm going to be going over the next few weeks so um that you know keep, keep your eye on the on the channel um over the next uh over the next day or two really i think we're going to release it next week so i'll let you know so yeah i hope that's I hope that's uh interesting to people who like to 3d print their their models i hope you're enjoying these videos the studio ones are a little bit different than what we normally do so i'm hoping it's something that you want to see more of we're obviously going to take this t-rex sculpt a lot further and it's developed into the course now so i'm going to over the next few days, I'll start dropping some information about when the course will be out, which is literally going to be in early March. And I'll make it available um, in the normal way, the same as our very first iPad sculpting course was. So um, if you're enjoying the content that we're doing, then please give the video a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, we can let you know when we're going to drop more of this content, which is quite regularly on a Wednesday and a Friday. Have a great week and see you soon.